Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we're talking about free XP ships. In particular, why free XP ships are being removed. If you don't know, the next update, update 12.4, free XP ships are being completely removed from the game. The last remaining handful, the Agir, the Azuma, the Gronigan, and the Hayate are being removed from the game for free XP. What's happening to them? Well, they're going to the armory for coal. And some of you have been asking, well, why are they removing these ships? There's a couple of very simple answers to this question. The first one being, free XP is not a difficult thing to acquire right now. Free XP used to be pretty daunting to farm out. If we take a look back at the history of free XP ships, the first free XP ship to be introduced into the game was the Missouri, the Tier 9 American battleship. It was not only the first free XP ship, but it was also the first Tier 9 premium in-game. It was such a novel idea that Wargaming actually screwed up the Tier 9 premium economy because they hadn't done it beforehand. And the Missouri had this insane economy. If you're lucky enough to have the original Missouri, this Missouri, you still have that insane economy on your Missouri today. And it's very easy for a Missouri player to enter into game, barely do anything, and then easily make a million credits. So, yeah, it was a highly desirable ship. And back then, free XP was pretty hard to come by. Why? Well, we didn't really have boosters back in the day. I mean, we had a couple, but we didn't have anything too crazy. So what would normally happen with the Missouri is that players would pay to convert free XP. Because you could grind out ship XP quite easily if you had a decent premium. So you could take out your favorite premium ship for a while, farm up a ton of ship XP, and then pay to convert that ship XP to free XP. So what we had players doing is deciding, oh, I want to pay, I don't know, 60 bucks for my Missouri. So they would farm out the free XP to get it to, to, to get them over that $50 remaining threshold where when they would exchange their ship XP they would exchange about 50 bucks worth of ship XP for the you know however much free XP they needed to get their Missouri and that's what they would typically do it wasn't too often that you had players completely getting the ship for free with free XP back in the day at least and keep in mind we were talking years and years ago so what happened with that well, we got more and more boosters. We got the economic signal flags, then we got the super economic signal flags that we used to have. And if you weren't around a couple of years ago, which, it, it well, it doesn't really feel like it's been that long. Um, I think it's been about a year, actually, however long. If you haven't been around from before the economic rework, and before they really started clamping down on these special signal flags, these special signal flags weren't overtly hard to get you could get them um, in event containers they were giving them away pretty regularly and if you were a dedicated player that you know got on at least three or four times a week which you know to some of you might sound a little crazy but i mean hey if this is your main game you pop on it every time you get off of work and you know you play around for a couple hours you could pretty easily get a decent stack of special signal flags and of course the more um dedicated players like of course myself I, you know i play this as a second job um I had tons of special economic flags to where I was running full economic flags on every single friggin' ship I had, and I wasn't running out. So, because of that, free XP kind of became super trivial. I was earning it at the same rate as ship XP. Now, keep in mind, too, of course, you know, YouTuber, you know, I'm taking part in every single event. I'm buying all the new premium ships that, that are coming out. So, I'm, you know, I'm doing all the dockyard and stuff, too. So, I'm getting tons and tons and tons of these special signal flags. You know, I, I'm an extreme example, of course. But even for the average Joe, it was nothing to slap on a bunch of special signal flags, take out your favorite premium ship. You could very easily farm out free XP. And keep in mind, the Missouri originally re released for 750,000 or 725,000 free XP. That was seen as a daunting task. Then the Musashi came out, and it was the same price. Then 
they started to catch on and they bumped up the next couple of ships to be 1 million free XP for tier 9 premiums. Which of course added a bit to the grind. And then they started uh, slapping out these $2 million free XP ships, which did add to the grind and helped cut back on it, a, on it a little bit, but still with the signal flags they had released in previous years, and just, again, the easiness of grinding out a couple million free XP, players were, of course, just grinding out these ships completely for free, essentially, and these are, again, some of these better ships in the game, the Azuma, the Aguirre, and the Groningen are, in my opinion, some of the best premium ships in the game, the Hayate, a couple of you seem to like her, but myself, not so much. So, they started to catch on to this, and they turned and looked for a resource that they could control how much you could get. So it couldn't be tied to in-game performance directly. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we got coal. Coal ships are, well, if you watched yesterday's video, they're some of the best ships in the game. Pomeran's a coal ship. Great ship. Duke of York, great ship in my opinion, coal ship. Kearsarge, in my humble opinion, the best premium battleship in the game, is a coal ship. But... As I'm sure most of you are aware, coal isn't something you can really grind. Because you don't get it based upon your in-game performance. You get it in a couple of different ways depending upon what's going on in the game at the moment. You can get your daily coal containers. I do. I get 1200 coal every single day at minimum because you're guaranteed to get one shipment of coal into those containers so you're guaranteed to get 1200 contain uh, 1200 containers 1200 coal every single day now of course if you get lucky you can get to three times that amount if the rng gods do smile upon you and you get triple coal containers with every roll so that's one way you can get it the other way you can get it is participating in things like ranked special events in game and the dockyard events and again they, they sometimes throw it in with premium ship bundles and things like that but you can't really buy it outright nor can you really grind it outright wargaming completely controls the amount of coal you receive one way or another there is a cap on the amount of coal you, you can get uh, again, sometimes they do sell it outright in containers and things like that. So you can, you know, get it if you need it, but you're paying for it. So if you're having trouble connecting the dots, Wargaming controls how much coal you get for free. And after that, you got to pay to get it, which of course makes them money. So you're either one, buying the coal, or two, you're coming back to the game to earn your coal, be it in the dockyard, be it in ranked or brawls, or, um, you know, again, whatever mode they have out that's rewarding you for it, or you're at least coming on every day to get your three coal containers and then popping off. So they're guaranteeing that you're either spending money on the game or you're at the very least playing the game. And if you're playing the game, you are more than likely to, of course, spend money on the game. This is a free-to-play game. They gotta make money somehow, and that's part of their business model. Now, is this some nefarious evil plot, in my opinion? I mean, it's kind of their own doing, in my opinion, because they flooded the market with all these signal flags and stuff that they were giving away in these bundles and things like that. And either that they weren't really watching it or they didn't realize how much they were giving away, kind of like with the Missouri, they didn't realize that, hey, we kind of overcooked this thing's economy, so now we kind of shot ourselves in the foot. You could say very much they did the same thing with the special signal flags because they were giving them away again for certain events or bundles with premium ships and things like that. You know, getting to spend a little extra money, but they didn't really see the long-term effects. So they had to rein in these special signal flags um, by one, getting rid of what you could really um, exploit them for, which was free XP ships. And two, of course, the economic rework, where, of course, you know, we don't have those anymore. Now we have the um, various boosters and such that are very hard to get. So they've kind of, you know, replaced it. And they, they did what I think Zimbabwe did, where they just kind of replaced their money with new money because they were so overinflated. They said, oh, yeah, we don't take this anymore. Now we take this. You know, we don't take the signal flags anymore, but now I take these premium, um, not premium, these economic boosters that are much rarer to get, so we're cutting back on our inflation. 
That's essentially what they did here with the uh, free XP ships versus the coal ships. And they're kind of just, you know, getting rid of the last couple of free XP ships that are out there. So now they completely control how much coal you get. Again, up to a certain point, unless you want to take your chance on containers or if they are selling it for whatever event. Now, is it an evil thing, you know, evil corporation? I mean, if you want to be completely unbiased about it, at the end of the day, they are a company. The company needs to make money to function. They got to pay the employees. They got to pay to keep the servers running. They have to, um, of course, pay to the art department that keeps carrying the game, so forth and so on. And at the end of the day, too, you still can get coal ships completely for free. It'll take a couple of months, but if you just get on, play your enough matches to get your three daily containers and hop off, you can 100% get some of the best ships in the game absolutely for free. And I give them credit for that at least. They, ha they haven't completely locked it behind a paywall. Yes, it takes a little bit longer, but it's truly not that bad. It's not like War Thunder bad. You, you want a real grind, go to War Thunder, you know what I'm saying. But that is what's happened with premium, with uh, free XP premium ships. And that's why they're being removed in full next patch. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you agree or disagree with my um, views on this? Do you think that it is them being super greedy? Or do you agree with me and think it's just you know, a way they're trying to keep the lights on at, at Wargaming and at World of Warships? Just to get, let me know in the comments down below. Hope you guys enjoyed and have a wonderful Tuesday. If you did enjoy, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 50,000 subscribers, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you all have a wonderful Tuesday, wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.